I'm Glenn Freeman from Morningstar, and I'm joined today by our Senior Equity Analyst, David Ellis. David, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you, Glenn. Now, David, just firstly, we've seen the Parliamentary Committee on Banking that was held just last week. Has that had any material impact on the big four banks, on CBA, Westpac, ANZ and NAB? No, um, very limited uh, impact, um, and we actually saw uh, all four major bank share prices increase during the week when the uh, inquiries were being held. Um, I think the key takeaway is that there were there were some interesting and worthwhile issues that needed to be raised, and and um, the bank CEOs were questioned on. But I was a little bit disappointed with the quality of the questioning. Some of the questioning I thought was just it was a clear indication that some of the parliamentarians didn't really understand um, the complex banking system and the way banks operate, which I suppose is not surprising. Um, but looking forward, there, there, will, there will be some changes that are that are going that are going to come out of the inquiries, and the, I think the prime minister has announced the establishment of a banking tribunal. Um, and, there, and there were some other, other issues such as um, bank account portability, um, positive credit reporting, open access to, more open access to customer data information. Some of those things the bank CEOs um, acknowledged and indicated that, that they, they would be considered or they, they wouldn't stand in the way of, but it'll take time, like years, for some of those things to be implemented. I think the, the most important takeaway is, and this gets back to my point earlier about the quality of the questioning, I think it was clear that the parliamentarians didn't have or don't have enough expert resources, research resources, to support them in, in asking probing and, and important and uh, intelligent questions. And I think the next round of parliamentary inquiries, which I, I think is in 12 months' time, approximately 12 months' time, I think we'll see the, 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 uh, um, the parliamentarians will be better resourced, have um, more, um, more probing, more uh, tougher questions for the, the bank CEO. So I think they got off relatively lightly, and I think in approximately 12 months' time, it's going to be tougher for them. Now, given the increased capital requirements for international banks that we're expecting to see handed down later this year, do you think this is something that will negatively affect Australia's banks? Well, I think that negative impact is already built into the share prices and has been um, over the second, second half of last year and, and throughout most of the first half of this year. Uh, I think, but however, the political landscape in Europe is changing significantly and uh, I think there's, there, there currently is, and I think it'll increase, pressure from European governments to, on the Baal Committee to water down or reduce the, um, the impact of any uh, future capital uh, requirements, higher capital requirements from the, uh, involved in Baal IV. The European banking system just can't handle it. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether those capital requirement, requirements are watered down we won't know until later this year. Uh, it's expected the above four will be released before the end of this calendar year. Uh, it'll, then it'll take APRA here in Australia. It'll take APRA a, a few months to assess it. So we won't know really until the middle of next year. And um, I'm expecting the Australian major banks will have to increase capital levels. But most importantly, and this is very important, I don't expect large one-off capital raises by the four major banks next year. Any higher capital requirements that APRA will introduce, I'm expecting to be implemented over a number of years, three years perhaps, three, maybe four years. And uh, I think that the four major banks uh, are well positioned to raise that capital organically rather than going to the market with large capital raises. And what I mean by organic capital, um, I'm talking about future retained earnings. I'm talking about dividend reinvestment plans, um, asset sales, and we've seen that uh, just this, this week with, or sorry, last week with National Australia Bank completing the 80% sale of their life business to Nippon Life for approximately $2 billion Australian dollars. Um, so asset sales will continue to play uh, a role, um, but more importantly, better capital utilisation. So what I mean by that is that the banks 
um, and this is nothing new. They've been doing this for many, many, many years. Is, is focusing on on um, moving out or reducing exposure to low returning businesses within the, within the, the, the bank groups and focusing more on higher profitable businesses. So we'll see more of that. And lastly, if needed, the banks can always do DIP underwrites, so dividend reinvestment plan underwrites. So I see the banks raising any additional capital, and roughly I'm, I'm seeing 20, I think 20 billions probably around the mark in total for the four. So roughly, you know, four and a half, five billion each. Um, but importantly, I'll just repeat this importantly, I see that being raised over three to four years from organic sources. So, so there's actually potentially upside to bank share prices. If, if the BAL4 regulations are watered down or, and or APRA does implement a staged or a delayed implementation period, I think that'll be a positive for bank share prices because they've certainly been impacted to date by expectations of large capital raisings next year, and I don't see that to be the case. Now, just lastly, you mentioned there about NAB selling off part of its life insurance business. We've also had ANZ announcing plans to divest its wealth management business. Could this be part of a broader trend that we see of banks refocusing on their, their core banking activities? Yeah, absolutely, and we have seen that over the last two years or so. Um, we have seen ANZ sell its Asanda business to Macquarie Group. We've seen National Australia Bank ex finally exit the UK with the um, IPO and, and sale of um, the, uh, Clyde South Bank in England. and. Um, and uh, and uh, Scotland, um, and as we just mentioned, uh, National Australia Bank again with the eighty percent sale of the life business. So uh, the, the, and there's quite a number of smaller asset sales um, within within all four major banks that that aren't as significant as those ones I've just highlighted. But we'll continue to see um, refocusing, as you pointed out. Um, ANZ is is de-emphasizing its Asian growth strategy that they had um, implemented for, they've been doing running for about seven years or so. So the focus is on Australia and New Zealand, uh, the core businesses of retail banking and business banking for all four major banks. And that's where the profits are, and that's where, the, where solid growth is. So that'll be good for, sh good for shareholders, it'll be good for profits, it'll be good for dividends, and it'll be good for um, share prices. David, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure, Glenn. Thank you. I'm Glenn Freeman for Morningstar, and thanks for watching.